Hello everyone, this video is going to talk you through sustainable urban living. It's going to use the examples of Curitiba and Dubai and look at what features of sustainable urban living exist here. So if we start first with looking at Curitiba, there are three main things that they're doing to encourage sustainable urban living here. So the first thing they're doing is waste recycling. So Curitiba was one of the first cities to recycle. In fact, they've been doing it since 1970 and they've won the highest UN prize for their work. So they're pretty good at now doing it. They're so good in fact, that two thirds of rubbish is recycled. So that means things like plastics, papers, glass, etc. To go further than that, they've launched something called the Green Exchange Programme. Now the Green Exchange Programme is definitely worth knowing about. So this was particularly designed to help the poor residents of the city. They're living in areas where the large rubbish trucks are unable to get down the streets. So instead, the government said, well, why don't the people bring their recycling to the truck? And that's what they do. So people queue up to exchange their rubbish. So those that work for the city here and helping to recycle in the green uniforms you can see in the picture, collect their recycling and they weigh it and people then can exchange that for excess food and produce, so things like bananas and cabbages and potatoes, so things they can eat. Or they can exchange that for bus tickets, which allows them to use the city's integrated transport system and go anywhere they want. So it's encouraging those to recycle, a huge incentive there. If we go further, and look at the integrated transport system, the city uses bi-articulated buses. So these are the ones you can see in the picture. Now these carry 4,000 people per day per bus. So that's great because it's reducing the use of cars within the city. So now about 70% of people are using the buses to commute to work. So that's great for the environment as it's reducing things like emissions. Imagine if all of those people had to travel by car into the city, that's going to cause huge amounts of congestion and CO2 emissions. So the integrated system that Curitiba's got is massively beneficial for the environment. Last but not least, if we look at green space, Curitiba is running what it calls Solution of the Parks. Now I might be thinking, well, what does that involve? Well, Solution of the Parks provides recreational space and it stops greenfield sites being used for slum creation. Do you remember, greenfield sites is that area of undeveloped land in the city. So it's stopping that being used for anything else except green space. To go along with that, the green space as part of solution in the parks allows things like flood water to drain into these areas, so it stops flooding, and water pollution issues as well, prevented by having loads of these parks. It stops all of things entering the water supply that we wouldn't want especially if that water was to flow through the slum areas. What's perhaps even slightly better here is instead of allowing new office blocks to be developed, existing office blocks are allowed to develop a few extra floors onto the buildings they already have. However, to do this, they have to create more green space at the bottom. So we could say, well, that solution is mutually beneficial for the economy because it's allowing more offices, more business, but also the environment because we're still creating green space. So 
If that's what's happening in Curitiba then, let's compare that to what's happening in Dubai. So in Dubai, the first thing that's happening is we're seeing huge efforts towards water and energy conservation. So the sustainable city in Dubai has all houses facing north. Well, why is that good then? Well, it's reducing air conditioning needs. These homes are facing less into the sun, so therefore need to be cooled less. Grey water is also recycled. Grey water is water that's already been had some sort of use. So that water is used for things like water features or even to water farm areas. And what you can see in the picture here is that solar panels are massively present. So these exist on all houses and carports. A carport is an area where a car would park, a bit like a shed for your car. So these solar panels supply the energy for communal areas and also pay for their upkeep at the same time. So there's no need for the shops to pay the rent on them. Well, that's great because it's saving people money, but it's also great for the environment too. Waste recycling has also seen massive advances. So in Dubai, in the sustainable city, they have one recycling or bin station per nine houses. And it's colour coded, a bit like what you can see in the picture here. So it simplifies what can and can't be recycled for residents. If you make something easier, people are more likely to do it. And that could be one of the reasons why they've seen massive success with recycling. They're also treating water and reusing water, as we already said. So they're recycling grey water and using that to feed things like the water features in the city. So if we look at the impact that's having on green space, well, it's allowing for green areas, isn't it? Well, that's great for the environment, but also for people. So it's given lovely recreation areas for local people. They've also, within these green areas, created pedestrianised streets so that people can go there for recreation. If something's pedestrianised, it means only people can walk through there. No cars or vehicles allowed. Well, that's great because it's going to lower emissions, less risk of accidents, but it promotes the use of that area for recreation for people. So we could say, well, that's socially sustainable because it's great for people. So in the exam, you need to weigh up how successful these strategies are. I hope you found this video helpful.